Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than my usual tutorials where I go step by step. Here I'm going to be doing a breakdown, which I'd obviously have to speed up a little bit in time lapse, of me making a Apple smartwatch. Now I didn't go and add every single detail, I try to keep it as basic as possible, but this is the final result and hopefully this is something you guys would like to watch, a breakdown of how I made an Apple watch in Blender. And I will be uploading this final result to my Patreon as well. So all of that is in the description below. Let's jump in. So when I was making the Apple Watch, obviously I started with a reference image, which I dragged into Blender. And the shape I started with, or the default object, was just a plane, which I kind of made into a rectangle. And I just used the bevel on the vertices to kind of round those corners. From there, it really just was a process of grabbing the edges and extruding them in a little bit and then moving them out to try and make a little lip at the front of the watch. From there, I'm just extruding things and adding in some more loop cuts. And I do actually have a different reference image open on my side monitor when I'm doing this. So I'm not just trying to purely look at the front. So that's always a good thing. Multiple reference is really important. So here you can see I'm tightening up those edges by adding in some more bevels. And I also just added in a face over there for the watch. Now that I was happy with that, I decided to make the little side component. And I wanted to make this as a separate object. Um, originally, I thought, well, I could just model it as part of this. And preferably, if you're going to be professional, that's what you'd do. But I ended up just going with this circle set up here that I extruded. And I kind of made like this long shape, gave it a face. And then once I was happy with it, I decided to add in a cylinder which I would set up as a Boolean to cut out the little dial over here. That's not the dial yet, but it's just kind of like the cavity where the dial was gonna sit into. And this was kind of a, like a part where I had to really adjust the little um, end bit there just to get that, uh, the dimensions to kind of look similar to the reference. I tried adding a bevel here and then I tried remeshing because those corners there were a little bit sharp, but I decided just to leave it and just go with auto smoothing. I then added in a cylinder, which I gave some rounding, and it was a little bit tricky to get it just right, but I eventually figured it out. And then I was adding in the little decal here, which is just kind of like this loop gouge, it kind of goes around in the end. And then the trickier part was figuring out how I was gonna add the little grooves. And instead of modeling them, I decided I was just gonna use an array modifier, and I was gonna offset it with an empty. So this is messy, but you know, I thought I could get away with it in this case. So I tried messing around with it at first. I don't know why, I've done this a million times, but it was struggling a bit. And I ended up figuring out, I needed about 16 of these guys to really make the threads. I tried eight at first, just didn't look right. And then once I had that, I just had to kind of adjust the shape of these little cutter objects, just so the cavities would look correct. And then I just actually duplicated the main dial to use that as a cutter object for the watch body because this um, little dial here has to sit inside of the watch body. So it didn't look quite right. So once I had cut that out, I proceeded to just finish off the little um, dial here. I just went then on to fill in the back there. I wasn't really gonna add any of the little sensor details back there. And I was kind of happy with that. I also then just made the little button by once again extruding down a sphere, not a sphere, a, a cylinder and kind of the leading the faces. And at first, this was just my Boolean cutter, but I decided to actually just um, change it a little bit in edit mode and use it for the actual button. So it ended up being you know, useful in that way. But when I looked from the front again, I realized that it wasn't quite right. So I had to go into the watch case or the little watch component on the side and just bring those faces down. And here the watch body was kind of really getting to the point where I liked it. And I decided before I go, too far making the um, watch handle, I was gonna quickly put some lighting on it. And at this point, I was kind of really curious. I couldn't help myself. I just wanted to kind of see what this would look like with some materials on. And sometimes that can help me catch some errors that I wouldn't have caught anyway. So I um, added some basic area lights, just gave it a material that I thought kind of best matched um, what I saw on the reference, which is just kind of like a, a pretty much a metal with um, the roughness turned down a little bit. And I gave the watch face its own material and I just used the projection mode in the UV editing and I just gave it the actual reference image. And that was kind of like a nice little cheat there. And then I just adjusted the lighting until I was happy with it. And this was kind of like, you know, where I realized, okay, this is gonna work. And I was kind of really happy with the results at this point. I was tempted at this point just to make the watch and not actually make the strap, but I thought it would just kind of look silly. So I decided I'll make the most basic strap I possibly can, um, not go too elaborate. So that was just 
Obviously a plane was the best object here. I just started by um, putting it at the top and I extruded the edge and I kept going, making the first bit. I duplicated the edge and then made the second part coming down. Because remember, these are two different straps that kind of clip together. And then it was just a simple matter of using um, proportional editing to kind of make it match. And here you can see I'm adding a solidify modifier. I really didn't want to do too much modeling here giving it some thickness. And then I was just extruding the end here to make kind of like a little bit where the, the, the thing that kind of clasps would sit there in there, the little metal buckle. And then just some more adjusting. Um, I actually add, added two subdivision surface modifiers, like one subdiv, a solidify, and then a subdiv. You can see here um, the materials. I mean, I hardly have to explain it. I just went with a really basic kind of like orange material. Gave it a render. I didn't really like it. I thought it lacked a little bit of detail. I mean, I was trying to keep this simple, but I thought I should probably do something. So I went in and added some nicer lighting, gave it a little bit more of a um, less saturation. I thought maybe that would make it look better, but I wasn't happy with that either. So I kind of switched it back to orange and I decided I'll add a texture instead to try to kind of get that just make it grab my attention. I just wasn't happy at this point. Like I kept going back and forth, maybe too much saturation, maybe too much reflection. And I realized it did need some sort of texture. So I ended up just using a wave texture to kind of add these little divots in there. And then I was just, you know, playing around with it. And this is kind of like one of those things I encourage people. Like if you're having fun when you're working in Blender, just try and experiment to kind of like what, you, what you're saying here, especially if you're not making an official kind of product for a client. So here you can see, I'm just taking a torus now and giving it a subdiv or a, a mirror modifier. I'm gonna use that as the little clasp that sits in here. And I, once again, this is all about keeping it as simple as possible. And then I decided just to add in a cut here, kind of remove a little bit there so you can see the clasp in there. And it just made it look a little bit, I think a little bit more professional. I didn't want this strap to look too basic. So here you can see I'm trying to kind of extrude some existing edges here, correcting the normals, just to make kind of like a little uh, little fold of material here where that the secondary clasp can sit there, the one that holds the um, the arm strap in, so it doesn't kind of like fall out or stick out of your watch. Um, I don't know all the technical terms for these these bits on a watch, but. This is pretty much what I was doing. And I based it off of references, obviously, but just kind of gave it my own little tweak. So here I'm adding in some more edges. I decided maybe I can add a different material as well to kind of complement the existing orange. Like I, I, I kept wanting to wrap this up the whole time, but I'm like, no, no, that's maybe a bit too basic. So I just tried to um, keep adding little details. And at this point I thought, okay, now, I should be happy with this. I think this looks good. And it ended up being what I kind of stuck with. So here is the final result. I hope you guys have enjoyed me taking you through a little breakdown of this project. Um, by no means is this a full blown tutorial. I just thought maybe this would encourage you guys to kind of give it a shot. Go ahead and model a smartwatch. You'll probably really end up enjoying it. Doesn't have to be an Apple Watch, it could be, you know, Android or whatever. But I think I'm gonna call this done for now. I will try and upload this final model to my Patreon so you guys can check it out, have it if you want, for those of you who are on Patreon, and um, definitely check out my Skillshare as well. You can join for free for one month, and I have a ton of awesome courses on there, and so do a lot of other 3D creators. So I'll see you guys next time, and thank you for watching.